Want more positivity in your life? Subscribe, turn on notifications, follow us, and you know, all that techie stuff. We'd love to hear from you. Comment, share, or give us a thumbs up. We are grateful to have you hanging out with us at Matt Logan Speaks. Hey, welcome back to the podcast, everybody. Today, I have a gentleman that left an impression on my life for the rest of my life. Wow. And uh, his name is Dave Senjum. And Dave, you uh, introduced yourself as Dave. I had no idea who you were at my daughter's funeral. Yeah. And that says a lot about who you are and your character. Yeah. And you're in the yeah. Senate. Well, I'm in the Senate. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was a that was a sad day. You know, and, uh, and just to let you know, we don't come for you know we don't come to funerals for political purposes. That was that was genuine. No, that's my yeah, point. Right, you yeah. just said I'm Dave. Condolences. That's yeah. it. That's all you did. Yeah. And I. Um, yeah. That that just uh, says a lot. Well, it was a, so. You know, it was a yeah. it was a sad day for all of us. There was an extended sadness through the the whole the, the whole area. Yeah. You know, and when, I, we, when we read about that, it was just so so unfortunate. And I, I think people need to see that. You know that you, how genuine you are personally yeah. and we've been having a really fun conversation <laughs> off camera so let's switch to all right something a little oh, more okay. light we huh? can do that um you know you uh you've been at this for a little while tell us how long you've been you've been going at it for us uh us normal folks here in minnesota <laughs> so uh i uh i've been at this uh first as a rochester city council person uh for 11 years and uh in 2002, there was a redistricting uh, opportunity for me. Uh, uh, Senate district, it was 29 then, it's 25 now, but uh, but basically consisted of my city council territory in Rochester and then uh, going out into Dodge County and I was raised in Hayfield and my roots, my relatives, my everything, everything about me probably is a, a product of Dodge County. You, you know, you always are a product of your life experience. So growing up, that was... That was home, so I, I had the Rochester, uh, uh, if you will, uh, space, so to speak, a voter space, and then the Dodge County going, kind of going home. And my uh, first cousin Bob went and said, it, "Dave, I think I think the name is still good out here." <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so, and it turned out to be good. So, uh, yeah, so I represent, uh, uh, you know, Northern Rochester, going up to Pine Island, and. Uh, Cass and Manorville, Byron, of course, uh, Dodge Center, and uh, and some you know the townships in between, and uh, and uh, initially it was all of Dodge County. Redistricting shrunk that a little bit, but uh, still represent a good part of that. So, yeah, it's a it's a great opportunity. I've done this 18 years. Uh, it, it it it's gone by in a flash. Honestly, it just it just seems like I got there. Uh, I've had a lot of life experience up there, but honestly, I don't have a clue where these years went went uh, they just they went so quickly and they have gone so quickly and uh but I, I still feel totally energized totally interested totally uh, ambitious towards the job and and knowing knowing that uh knowing that i know how to do the job that it's uh you know, it's like any job it takes you a while to understand it to you know how how does this work where do you where are the buttons uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when do you hold them and when do you fold them? Yeah, all those things and uh, and you know you do you do learn that over time and uh, I, I say now uh, the job is I don't want to denigrate it at all, but I mean it's 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 much easier than it was in those initial years when you were trying to understand just how the place worked and who the people were and things like that. Uh, it's uh, it's you know you, you see a you see an idea or a bill. You know whether or not it can go anywhere or not, and uh, if it can go someplace, or even if it's so important it has to go someplace, like some of these interchanges we've had out here, Highway 14, things like that, uh, then uh, then you just go to work on it. And uh, fortunately, we've been able to get a lot of things done like that. So it uh, it does. You know, experience is good. <laughs> for sure, for sure, I agree. <laughs> I, in fact, I think because of that experience and you really digging in and kind of um trudging through that old f highway 14 project i don't think anybody else could have got it done what? i mean I, I know you worked awfully hard on that so so this is all this that. is all inside so it, it's like it's like saturday this the the uh the session's going to be over on uh on uh sunday night 
and my assistant Susie drew. We had Highway 14 in the bill, just like we always had it. And we knew at the time we we if we left it in the bill. Governor Dayton was gonna was going to uh, veto it. He was going to just line item veto it. So it wouldn't happen anyway. So it was it was kind of cosmetic. And said I said to Susie Susie drew Susie. Get get Newman and Torkelson and Mindot in a room, and work this thing out. And it's like two o'clock in the morning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> work this thing out. Let's get this done the right way. And uh, and she came back at 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, now we got the whole rest of the day now. And they, they had it figured out, and we got it done. So it's it's mm. it's not like me. It's like me asking, maybe telling Susie, Susie, get it done, figure this out, uh, force the issue, and, uh, and let's get a real bill here. And we did, and it worked. Nice. <laughs> we got fun. So. You, you make it sound simple, and I know that it's not. <laughs> well, maybe not quite that simple, but uh, but you know we just we just ground through it, and uh, sometimes you have to do this, and uh, and again uh, all night, we, yeah. which is that's the way this, that's the way the legislature works. We don't. There are certain times we don't we don't even know what our, what what time it is. Frankly, it doesn't matter. We got a job to do, and and we got you know, we've got twenty four hours a day, and you just use them all if you have to <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely well i think that's um that's really what uh, people who have uh, entrepreneurs understand yeah. that people who have small businesses understand sure. that yeah. you, it's not unlike, you just, you know, yeah you just else. go through it and get it done so yeah it's uh, you get that that's the thing got get it done you know that's what we, that's what we go there for it's uh, you know and, and there are people that go there just to kind of hang around. I'll tell you that. I won't name okay. names. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, you got to have that get it done spirit. If you don't, you, I, it's going to be totally ineffective. Yeah, I won't name names either. But I'm not sure if you remember this or not. Or frankly, uh -huh. I can't remember if you were there. But I went up and testified. Uh huh. Um, and uh, there were some different things that were uh, were being looked at for as far as some driving laws. Sure. And so I went up and testified, and I can I, I totally saw that. Yeah. You know, there were people there that wanted some photo opportunities. There yeah. were people there that you know wanted to just kind of uh, hang out, like you say, and yeah. didn't really want to uh, push through and get a job done. Yeah. So I, I'm I've witnessed that firsthand. Yeah. So that's just not. Uh, yeah, when you're it's up there, you take a it. take a look at look at their eyes. You can you can tell the curious ones. You can tell the ones that where things are churning. You know, okay, I, I hear the story. We got to fix the story. How do we get it done? And uh, you know, those are those are the people you want to. Those are the go-to people. <laughs> I, it, absolutely. I think what's sad for me in my own life, yeah. and I see this yeah. otherwise too, is I never really paid any attention to politics until this year. Sure. And. Um, you know, I, I of course I looked at it. I knew who I was voting for. All of those things, yeah. but other than that, I didn't dig into it very much. And yeah. I think that's a mistake. I think that everybody yeah. needs to really understand how that process works, especially in today's sure. age of technology. Right. Yeah. We there's a lot of technology. We can see oh, what you're word. up to. Yes. We can do yeah. those things. I yeah. think everybody needs to do that because they'd see so much more truth. Yeah, they would see the things that I've seen. Because you, you can witness it in a different way than what I did. Yeah. But I think it's so important for people to do that. Uh, there's these live streams and sure. whatever yeah. else that are going on yeah. and, and things. But uh, what. And people have to remember we're just public servants. That's all we are. We, we are gifted, if you will, with the opportunity to go to St. Paul and, and, and represent people. And, and one, of the, one of the things I'd, I'm just going to kind of wonder here, you know, it's like a Friday night and you're driving home. And sometimes I'll come back through these back roads down in, in, in the North Byron area mm -hmm. or through Manorville and something. And, and you, you, drive, uh, you drive down the road and you see lights in, 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 in the houses. And you know, you don't quite know who lives there, but you know that you cast a vote that day, maybe more than one, that either that person or persons in that house, they, they either liked it or they didn't. And 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 you kind of drive along and you think about that a lot, uh, because you know you you do represent everybody, but we're but we're up there just as I said, public servants trying to do the best we can, trying to represent the ideas of the people that we represent to the best of our ability, and and there's a lot of guesswork in that. <laughs> there really is, of course, because you see that light in the house, you don't exactly know where where they are on, on certain issues, but but you but you try to listen, and that's. You know, when, when we look at a, a, a new potential legislator, I mean, who, who is the person that can listen? Hmm. Uh, you, you learn a lot more listening than you do talking, I can tell you that. And so 
you, you, li- you look for the listener, you look for that contemplative person that can listen and maybe assemble thoughts and, and eventually, you know, take those thoughts to action. So that's what we try to do. And, you know, we're, we're good at it sometimes, we fail other times, but we're human beings just like just like the people in that house <laughs> with a light on yeah. that we're trying to identify with. So true. I, I love that. The Something that comes to mind is um, recently, I don't know if you heard about this, but recently some emails and um, a computer hard drive and things had come out on Joe Biden. Uh-huh. And I'm not going to talk about Joe Biden, but I don't have, did you hear that? Yeah, a little bit. A little I, bit. Not, yeah. But yeah. Here's, here's where I'm going with it. Sure. Uh, Twitter, Facebook literally came out with statements and said they're, they're not going to put it out there. They're going to suppress it and stop uh-huh. it and things yeah. like that. Um, I know you've had some personal experience with some things that aren't exactly true. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, we, you know, so... Uh, why, well, and, I, and maybe this yeah. is the question. Why is it that people will listen to only one narrative and not actually look at, um, you know, there's... How, how, how does that go? His story, her story, and the truth? Yeah. yeah right? <laughs> yeah. I mean... Well, so I'm involved in a campaign right now, a re- re-election campaign. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, it's one where there's there there are forces. There's a lot of interest. Obviously, there's huge interest in uh, uh, getting rid of divided government in Minnesota. Uh, and that to do that, you get you you put the DFL in charge of the Minnesota Senate. Uh, and and there's millions of dollars being spent by outside forces to do that. Uh, and some of that, hundreds of thousands of that dollars are are on my race. And so. Yeah. In this case, uh, former Mayor Bloomberg, New York, uh, as a foundation, he's pumped uh, well over a million dollars into this thing. Uh, and every day, people are getting cards that that aren't that aren't saying very nice things about me. And frankly, they're not true. But there's, uh, you know, the truth doesn't matter in some of this. It, it should matter, but it doesn't. Uh, freedom of speech. He's allowed to say anything he wants about me, and. I suppose I I am about him, but I wouldn't I wouldn't say anything other than the truth. But but again, the the, the literally hundreds of thousands of dollars against our, our little campaign budgets that that uh, allow us to send two or three postcards out and hang some lawn signs up and and maybe a little bit of radio and things like that. And and so it's a it's like a, a pea shooter against a, an atomic bomb, so to speak. But, <laughs> but but we do our best, and we just kind of have to live on uh, and, 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 and die, basically, on on the fact that uh, we're good people. We've, we've done our best uh, for this district. We uh, uh, hopefully have some level of reputation that uh, gives people confidence, and for at least for me, to, to be reelected. Uh, but it's the way it is, and... Uh, it's you know campaign finance reform is one thing, I, but again, free speech allows anybody to do just about anything, and uh, and uh, the outside money, so to speak, is something that uh, we wish wasn't there, but it is. And uh, you know, people at our level, you know, that don't have millions of dollars to spend getting elected, uh, you know, you know, maybe ten, twenty, actually more than that, probably about fifty thousand. Uh, is what our campaign budget is, and, and we're we're fighting some enormous money, and but we just we just have to go forward and you know knock on doors and ask for votes and ask for lawn signs here and there and, and do what we can and hope our reputation as as a good person prevails. It's been very interesting for me because what I've seen uh, again I haven't really. Of course, I, I look at politics a little bit, just simply I want to know who I'm voting for. But what I've seen so much, and maybe this has happened for years, yeah, like yeah. like I said, I don't know. What I've seen so much of is there is the, the, the Democratic Party is actually using those smear campaigns a lot more than the Republican Party that I've seen with my own personal eyes. Yeah. That is very interesting to me, and I, I don't understand that at all as a, as a human being, because if... Let's take my podcast, for instance. Yeah. What if I went around and I started bad-mouthing all these other podcasts that are similar to mine sure. and tried to lift myself up? Uh-huh. Uh, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Sure, I need to I need to grow my podcast and my thing based off of what? My merit and my character yeah, yeah. and my thoughts, my ideas, my perspectives. Uh-huh. Why is it, in your opinion, that that's so different from one party to the next? What do you see sitting here as a Republican? 
I, you know, it's it's really a hard question. I'm not sure if I can answer it. It's, it is. Let's start with, do you, do you see that as being accurate? Yeah, well, yeah, I think so. I just, you know, the, the Republicans, politicians I know uh, would not do that to, to an individual. I mean, I, I'm not going to say we have more character. I don't know. We yeah. have more honor. I don't, I don't know if that's fair to say that either, but, but we, we just don't. The, I think it's the operatives probably, uh, mm. the people behind the scenes that, uh, that, uh, that I think, uh, and, and, you know, if, if I have somebody producing a, a, a lit piece for me, we, these little mailing things we get, and, it, and, it, and it's, it's going to denigrate my candidate, it, it's just, no, I, I don't want that. I don't, I don't want that to be reflect my character because it would. Because uh, uh, when you finally go to right, bed at 2 right, a.m., you exactly, want to sleep. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, just not, it's just not me. And, uh, you know, you win with the truth, you win with the honesty. I always say you, you 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 run for the job. You don't run against your opponent. Well, yeah, and uh, yeah, and, and you run because you think you can do the job the best, and you don't run against your opponent. At least, I've never have at least, uh, and that's the way it is this year as well. But yeah, I think I, I just you know okay. So uh, no, what's the senator from South Carolina, uh, Diane Feinstein, and, and, mm-hmm. and him, uh, what's his name again? Yeah, I can't remember, but I know who you're talking <laughs> well, about. So, so uh, Republican and Democrat, United States it, senators hug after a, a, a judiciary committee here. Yeah, and uh, and Senator Feinstein's getting criticized, being asked to step down as as uh, as lead uh, senator for the for the Democrats on that committee. I mean, good grief, uh, we have. We have relationships. Even the Minnesota Senate, do you, do, you, do you think we arrive on a Monday morning and, and start bashing each other? No, we right. go in a tiring room. We, you know, How are the kids? What did you do last weekend? Uh, we, are, we are family, and I'm sure it's family at the United States Senate as well. And, uh, and they were simply reflecting, uh, uh, I th- probably, uh, as senators, uh, a, a feeling that you know, professionally they had, they had conducted that hearing in a, in a fair and in, in dignified fashion, I think that's all they were doing. But, but all of a sudden, then the politics emerges, and Diane Feinstein has to leave. Well, I don't get it. I mean, if if you can't have relationships, people see people say you knock on a door. People say, "Why can't you guys go up and get along together?" Well, of course we get along together, <laughs> and they get along together too. I'm sure off camera, yeah, in the United States Senate, but the public doesn't seem to allow it, at least uh, on their side. The, the media has definitely gotten way out of yeah. control, I think, showing some of that negativity, and they're obviously manipulating kind of that thought process, too, yeah. of d- division, it seems to me. Um, yeah. And honestly, I think it's uh, – well, let's put it this way. They want to make some money, and sure. so they know who to go after to, yeah. to get viewers, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think that's a big part of it, so – I think that's definitely a struggle to, to uh, from yeah. a consumer point. I was thinking this morning, you know, where do I go to get news? And I'm thinking about, uh, you know, Chet Huntley and David Brinkley and those people that I, yeah. I thought in those days reported the news. I don't know if they were tilted or not. I, I don't think we thought those days that way. But So I look at Fox and certainly you get the slant. You look at CNN, you get the slant. You look at CS, M, MSNBC and you get the slant. I mean, where do you just go and get straightforward news, you know? Podcasts, I, I, podcasts, probably because. But guess who doesn't want to come on a podcast? <laughs> well, all right. You'll have to tell me. <laughs> we we won't go down that path, but uh, it's been but, very interesting to me on invitations that I've sent out and the people that uh-huh. don't respond and the people that are here and want to have uh, a chat. So, I think well, that's it's been very, it's a good. I mean, you know, it's good to sit here. You know, I guess we sort of just unfold ourselves. And, yeah. Uh, I, I don't feel at all threatened about intimidating. You can ask anything you want. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's it's okay. And this is what we do. And, 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 and what we need to do, frankly, if we're going to uh, be that public servant that we want to be. You know, the servanthood is is what I think I do. And, uh, and if we're going to hold that torch, if we're going to carry that mantle, then... People have to kind of know what's inside us, what we're made out of, and this helps. I'm not sure if it, I agree it does help because I've learned a lot in podcasts and, yeah. and things like that and people's thoughts and, and just a, a long-form interview, so to speak. Sure. They're just getting out what their thoughts out there. Um, 
you've probably heard California, they have a mass exodus, right? Have you heard that? Like people are leaving yeah. the state like crazy. Yeah, yeah. And you can you can just go to the Nevada border and see that. Yeah, I mean there <laughs> there's a lot of people, a lot right. of very yeah. high yeah. influential yeah. people um, up in Idaho, even. I mean, they're, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. Yeah, that's they're they're exiting. So it would seem to me that that philosophy is pretty evident, and it doesn't it doesn't last, right? It can't last. Right. Yeah. In other words, the philosophy of of kind of the leftist sure. thought process. Right. Yeah. Um, are you concerned with that with Minnesota and the way it's kind of the, the the way I've seen it with the handling of COVID and things like that? It's kind of that control and manipulation um, from a consumer standpoint, from my standpoint. Yeah, I right think from uh, the top. I th- I think you know I think the uh, the mini example right now is what's going on in Minneapolis, uh, our mother city. You know, yeah. you want your mother city to be your strongest city because if, if for selfish reasons because it's got such a tremendous tax base now downtown minneapolis uh who's going to come there for a convention anytime soon mm-hmm. uh restaurants are closing some are even burnt down uh we're, we're into this zoom world now and so all that office space or a lot of it uh, maybe 20 30 percent may not be used and and you're just watching a city that uh is so important to minnesota for a lot of reasons uh and again, selfish relief for no other reason than it, it, it has a tremendous tax base, and some of that taxes does come into the coffers of the of, 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 of the state of Minnesota. So, so you watch it crumbling there, and then you kind of you know you watch the spillover, and uh, and people I think want a balanced uh, approach to politics. They want the give and take, and uh, and and that's what that's what makes this system work. The great debate. And, uh, and and the votes falling where they may in terms of that great debate. But uh, we are very, very close to being a one-party state. In fact, we're like one or two votes from being a one-party state, and one of those votes might be mine uh, in terms of going forward. If we are, uh, with the redistricting and with everything that follows that in terms of, of votes within the Minnesota legislature, be it House and Senate and certainly the governor, uh, it is a, a, a free and open market in terms of uh, one party being able to do anything that they want, uh, imposing their will, if you will, that will, on, on the people of Minnesota. Now, I don't think the people of Minnesota necessarily want a one-party state, but we're very, very close with this election to getting there. So we'll see how it goes. If, uh, if, if it does turn into a one-party state, yeah, I can see I can see people moving out. Uh, uh, for a lot of reasons, business reasons particularly, because the only reason, or the only way, uh, short of making some real hard decisions to make it through this budget deficit that we're going to be facing, is to tax more. Well, we're already literally there's about five states in the country that uh, tax more than we do, and uh, and businesses and people uh, will move away from uh, high tax states. So we're about as high as we can possibly be. If we tax more, it's going to have some effect on people and where they live and where they want to do business. We so have it's a, very serious. It is very serious. Yeah. I agree. And I think that, um, so I've said this before, but I think what, what's happening right now is, is that people are, are well, I'll take let's, let's take the camera lights for as an example. Yeah. They're super bright lights, right? Sure. right and yeah. so what's happening is, is they're shining this incredibly bright light on COVID and they're scaring people to yeah. death with it and it it was a novel a new virus at the beginning and we didn't sure, understand right, it yeah. right but they're shining this incredibly bright light on it while the things in the dark suicide um alcoholism you know depression i mean we can name yeah, all yeah, kinds right, of other things yeah, over yeah. here in the dark right while this big bright light is shining on something that well, quite, quite frankly, is very minimal at this point sure. in the grand scheme of things. Uh, car crash, um, it was something that I follow in our, our sure, state, right, is yeah. uh, death is up. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I talked to a state trooper in Colorado a week ago. The, they're up 20%, Sure. you know, and all these things this to date. These are concerning things, and so they're shining this bright yeah. light on that. Yeah. And I think that people in this election, this is my opinion, I'm not sure. telling anybody who to vote for. Sure. I want to make that really clear. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, that's not why I'm here. I do want them to vote. Yeah. But I want them to look. Sure. Right. Look at 
what's going on. Look at all the different things. Don't be scared of this this one thing. Don't be yeah. scared of this one narrative. Look at everything that's going on. Find the truth. How can we uh, when when what's your advice digging into this a little bit deeper with you personally? What's your advice for guys like me that are looking for that truth? You've been doing this a while. Where do we find it? Uh this is not a very good answer. You just have to find. You just have to find somebody that you you can trust and, and believe in, and that it, it is is answering you for reasons which aren't based on a political future. Yeah. Uh, and that might be hard. Uh, I happen to believe with this COVID thing that uh, that we need to take care of ourselves. You know the you know the the masks I. I have it off right now because we're distancing, we're, yeah. but I, I walked in your house today yep. with a mask on. Yep. <laughs> I respect that, and I respect the fact that that this is a serious disease from the standpoint of you know we just we 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 don't want it run, running any more rampant than it already is through our society. But but at the same time, I I do believe that prudent precautions uh, are are something we need to exercise, but we also need to exercise some level of of, of freedom. I, I think we can open up uh, some of our youth sports and things like that. To some extent, we have, but but the idea that we can have—I don't know what it is—20 or 250 at a funeral, but not 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 251. Or I mean, there's a lot of arbitrary yeah, arbitrary yeah, yeah. decisions here. But but just look at the practices, look at the space, and and, and make some individual judgments. I think I think people are uh, have gotten used to. What, what these precautions should be and then granted some 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 unfortunately don't you know don't practice them and and that's that's concerning I think it needs to be for everybody but if we can if we can get this precautionary ethic uh, established hopefully this is going to be over in, in, a, in a few more months but but that's not for certain either uh, we just have to I think be responsible individuals, and, and where do you where do you go to find advice? Uh, I don't know. Everybody's going to have to, I think, make that personal decision themselves. It's it, it's something that uh, I don't I don't know that there's a totally unbiased person out there. What I do know is that uh, our state has been hurt financially uh, more than a lot of states. Uh, uh, notwithstanding California, which has really been hurt by COVID, yeah. uh, literally forty nine percent of their of their revenue is lost over the first yeah. five months of the year because of this disease. We're at about twenty nine percent, but uh, and that's that's a lot of money as well. It's going to take us a long time to get it back, but uh, but that is as it is, and, and uh, we just have to churn through this as brave Minnesotans, as brave Americans, and. And, uh, and and try to bring some finality to all this. Uh, the virus is not going to go away by itself. We, we we've just got to protect ourselves. Eventually, it will. But but we can't we can't let the human body be that reservoir and spreading it all over as well. I I think uh, that's absolutely true. And I think for me, it's like um, you know I, I uh, trust. I, I talk about trust versus force in yeah. some of the speaking that I do. And what that looks like is is that I'm going to do a lot more based off of trusting something. Sure. Like I'll I'll trust the government a lot more if they trust me back, yeah. right? Um, instead of forcing me to do things. Sure. Yeah. Um, and so I think that you talk about the masks now. What do we do with the numbers that have come out from the CDC itself and says that seventy some odd percent of people wearing masks have caught COVID? And and you know so yeah. when data changes. Uh, how we need to change, sure, correct? Yeah. And, and so, if the the mask policy is being uh, mandated, and the data shows that they don't work, okay, why do we wear masks? Yeah. What? And I don't. I know you can't. You're not a medical professional. But well, what, I, what I'm saying is this: I, I, I'm, is when data changes, <laughs> we need to change too, correct? Yeah. Well, it, it's. So in my working life, amongst things, I was the institutional biosafety officer at Mayo. Uh, we didn't have to deal with COVID, but we dealt with a lot of other sure. uh, high, higher risk uh, microbiologic viral agents and things like that. And and uh, and we worked, you know, with them in a laboratory and uh, 
it was my job to make sure that uh, these things were being worked on safely. Wow. So what's the, what's the mask about? It's it's just there, there's a there's a concept here. I'm surprised it hasn't get talked about uh, a lot. It's it's dose response and and mm. and uh, so it, it's a matter you put that you put that mask on. It may not. It will not probably get every viral particle. But it's uh, it's uh, it's a matter of reducing that dose to the extent that your human body can then so then it accommodate mitigates it. The, yeah, it the, mitigates it. In some cases, if you get a if you get a powerful dose, that dose may be powerful enough to the point where your where your human body uh, cannot overcome it, and you get sick. Mm. On the other hand, if you can lessen that dose by who knows, if you can take that 100 and make it 30 uh, in terms of viral particles, maybe you're going to be able to handle that. So. So the mask is not necessarily perfect, but it, it is a filter, and it will capture a some percentage. of the viral particles, and it may capture enough so that you don't get sick. And, uh, it's an interesting and it's, it's, perspective. It's just, again, dose response, it's a, basic, it's a basic premise, if you will, in infectious disease and, and prevention. So, yeah. And so that's why we do it. You know, if you, if you want really high-level protection, you... You put a full face respirator on with cartridges yeah. and 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 envelop yourself with, with with a heavy gown or even even a plastic bubble, <laughs> and you can you can <laughs> work that? with some pretty pretty hazardous agents. And yeah. that's it's no way to that's live. That's what we though. do in some cases with the, with the high risk yeah. stuff, but yeah. but we're not going to do that with COVID. But again, you just you just try to limit the dose, and that's what a mask does. Sure, yeah, you know, that's what in, you know the hand sanitizers and everything else do. Yeah. Um, you talked about living with it and, you know, we need to, uh, I think we need to look at things that also protect us um, yeah. internally. And I know that a yeah. lot of information has come out about vitamin D deficiency sure. yeah. and how that's affected people in COVID. And I know zinc has been one of them. Vitamin C also. Um, is, is that something that uh, you think is missing in the narrative, yeah, uh, exercise has been another one that they've they've said. I, I, I know that you've personally taken on that yeah. initiative, right? Uh, uh, I have not necessarily for COVID. I hadn't thought about it that way. It was just boredom. Uh, I needed <laughs> I needed a I needed a COVID goal goal, and that was yeah, ten thousand steps a day. Uh, initially, it was going to, you know, I was going to do a hundred. 100 days and that's going to be a million steps so that'd be pretty nice to walk a million steps well i got yeah. my million steps now what uh, <laughs> so now, well we did another 100 days and so i'm 200 days and plus and uh, two million steps and i don't i think i'm about 225,000 now but it just uh, so it's just just kind of a goal but uh yeah i don't know so much about you know the the, the supplements so whether they help or not you know the medical people there's i don't know there's concrete evidence either side but you know, a little vitamin D if, with 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 I expect uh, some level of uh, uh, of you know reason and logic perhaps can't can't hurt you too much and the vitamin C and so on drinks some orange juice or whatever and that's that's probably good whether it helps or not I don't know you know it again it gets back to this dose response thing you get a big slug of this stuff and you you might well get you know if you're in a, in a group of people and there's laughing and there's giggling and there's you know the the viral particles, the uh, you know spewing out, uh, you know this 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 mist, this invisible mist which we can't see but we know that mm -hmm. it exists. Uh, uh, you know you, you get in that airstream and you know take a good take a good slug of this stuff in terms of just basic number of viral particles. You you may well get it. Yeah. Without a mask, so you got to just kind of watch yourself, keep your distance. I think I haven't personally been inconvenienced with this. A lot. Uh, I mean, we we wear our masks and and uh, try to do the right thing, you know, with, within certain reasons. I'm not. Uh, well, maybe I am overt about it, but I'm not. I'm not paranoid about it either. You know, just take use a good judgment, use a good practices, and live your life. I can easily walk into. I could walk around this, the store or wherever we are with a mask on. That's fine. Uh, and then you know, keeping your distance a little bit is fine. 